Hey there, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be talking about attacking the F2 and the F7 pawns. And we are not talking about attacking the A2 and the A7 pawns because the F7 and the F2 pawns are the weakest pawns in the game of chess, mainly because they are only defended and protected by the king, right? So um, that is why that is what makes them very special. Um, I'm, I'm going to be showing you some positions on that so that you can so that you will understand the concept of attacking an f2 and f7 pawn and honestly there's no there's not really much to talk about just know that the f7 pawns are very weak and if your opponent like gives you the opportunity to attack the king maybe by moving the f7 pawn or uh, gives you the opportunity to attack the f7 pawn by not defending it then you should know how to how to um, attack and I cannot show you all of the positions in the world on attacking the F7 and F2 pawns. I'm also going to show you uh, how you can how you can get those kind of positions and only the F7 pawns, so that you will know how to attack them, right? Um, yeah. So keep in mind that there, are, as much as there are one million kinds of positions that can occur from a chess game, there are also thousands or maybe millions of positions. Where you can attack the f7 pawn so you need to know how and when to attack right all right so um without wasting your time do you remember this position this one i'm sure you've you've, you've come across it before meeting for the scholars meet that occurred to you right it happened mainly because you, you you or your opponent did not um you did not protect the f7 pawn Maybe by playing knight to h6 or knight to f6 or even queen to e7, right? To defend the pawn. So yeah, that is one example of the f7 pawn, right? So let's look at another example. Um, so if you look at the position on the board very well, and look at the f7, the f7 pawn. I might also say the f7 square. It, it just depends, right? It's it, the f7 pawn or the f7 square is the same thing so the f7 square is defended by sorry is, is attacked by four pieces the knight is also attacked right so even if the knight drops back now black can choose to defend the f7 pawn from the queen by moving the knight to f6 but what good does it do? It doesn't do any good because knight can just take, right? So you see, if the more your opponent pressures your f7 square, or you, the more you allow your opponent to pressure your f7 square or pawn, it makes your position very weak, right? Now look at how black's position is very weak. And um, as the attacker, you should also try to pressure your opponent's f7 square because if you do that, you're going to bring up positions like this where they cannot save the position. If they choose to you just do this, you just take, you take, right? You take and you see, you see. So, um, there are many, many, many ways of attacking the F7 square, but this is just one where you put pressure on the F7 square. There are positions where you, you will use the, the, the F7 square as a, a means of um, opening up or, or, or a means of op yeah, or opening up an attack on a piece. Right, so it, it it depends. Again, there are many ways of attacking the f7 square, right? So you just have to know when and how to do it. But this is one of them. Put pressure on that f7 square, right? That's if you have time. If your opponent is attacking you or something, cover your attack first. Then you attack the f7 square. That is if it is weak and attackable, right? So um, let's look at the second game. Uh, I have like many games here. I have many games here, but I'm going to show you two of them and then you can look at them in the study. I'm going to drop the link to the study in the description box so you can look at the other games and see how possible or how, how the F7 square can be attacked. Right? So I'm going to we'll look at this game. Uh, this one. Is it this one? Um okay yeah this one so uh, i'm not going to st stay very much on the opening 
Yeah, so from this position now, black played bishop to c5, which is a very good move. In fact, it's the best move in the position. Now, white cannot take because black is going to give a royal fork to the king and queen, right? So taking the bishop, mm -mm, no. Now, white played a not very good move in this position. White played into g3, and then black used black used the opportunity now to attack the f2 pawn now this is a more kind of a more advanced concept but uh you get the hang of it when i explain it to you now you can see that the the e3 square sorry d3 square and the d and the e4 square sorry the, these squares are not defended right which means the knights can land on these squares yeah and that and that, and that is sorry and that is what you get as black for developing your pieces very well and that is what you get as white for not developing your pieces rightly like you should not be moving out your queen in the opening like that right so black played um black played bishop takes on f2 and normally you don't want to take on f2 because the king can take the queen can take they're all defended right but if you look at what i explained earlier these squares are weak which means if the king takes on f2 then knight is going to go to d to e4 and then to royal fork again and if the queen takes now then we have knight to d3 another royal fork right so um this is one way of looking at attacking on f7 squares right so, so like we looked at in the other position just mounts pressure on the f7 square in this case now there was no mountain of any pressure it was just one piece that was in fact the f the f2 square was defended more than it was attacked but because it is a tactical motif because we're looking at it in a tactical aspect we have to look at moves ahead right this is already a fork if the king moves away then the queen is lost right if the king takes what can white do what can black do right so attacking the f7 pawn sometimes comes with you knowing what to do after you take because it, it's like half of the time you see it comes with a sacrifice sacrifice the bishop sacrifice the knight right to get an opening in the king's position or your opponent's position right so um this is another way of looking at attacking with the f7 pawn you need to look at this from a tactical perspective where you just find um one move it's a one mover or a two mover you take with the bishop and then you, you think of what you can do after think of the weaknesses in your opponent's position and then you'll use the f2 as a, as a way to infiltrate into the position into the weakness right you see it's, it's not very hard at all so this is the second um, position and i'm going to stop here i'm going to leave the other games i'm going to drop the link as i said in the description so that you can follow and if you want to solve more puzzles on um the f7 and f2 pounds then you see where my mouse is at you go to puzzle dashboard um it's loading you go to click on you click on puzzle themes it's still loading yeah then you scroll down to yeah attacking on attacking f2 or f7 right so if you if you get to this position it's going to sorry if you what am i saying if you if you get the land there's twenty one thousand puzzles where you can solve in this position so please try to solve them if you solve them very well you get the pattern you get the hang of of solving of of, of attacking on f2 and f7 and if your opponent makes mistakes you'll be able to see the mistakes because you've solved twenty one thousand puzzles on attacking on f2 or f7 right so i promised that i was going to or i didn't promise i said i was going to give you a puzzle to solve at the end of the video so yeah this is the puzzle white just played a3 and it's black to play now i remember i said the tip i'm going to give you is that i told you that sometimes you mount pressure sometimes there's no mounting of pressure you just use it as a way to open up an attack so look at the position and tell me what you think the answer is in the description box down below thank you very much for watching this video i hope you learned something 
And I hope you, you, the, what you learned is going to stay with you. Yeah, I will see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.